at the battery charger on the combine this morning. I'm gonna check all the fluids and uh, make sure they're okay and then try and back her out of the shed if it'll go. filters because of COVID. So there's a lot of pressure there. Take a look at fuel this afternoon. So, that's a bad bearing we're going to try and replace. Not sure how that all comes apart. I had it halfway apart last year, looking at it. But, uh, now we got to fix it. So, start tearing things off here and see where we're at. Having one. How much fun am I having? As much fun as you can have in a combine when the wind isn't blowing. The barley dust is swirling in your face. So it's been three hours and I had to pull a whole bunch of stuff apart to, to get everything apart. So the bearing was gone on one end and when I opened her up I seen that the seal on the bearing on the other end was gone. So that means we need to do some work on both ends. So this is the shaft in here, just this side of the concaves. Uh, that's been in there a long time that rock probably from when we were combining peas nothing like peas to turn your combine into a rock picker anyway i'll uh pop down and show you what looks like underneath so this is the side that the uh the bearing was gone on the shaft is still in pretty good shape uh this isn't really a, a wear here this is just a recessed part for the lost part of the shaft so the shaft is still in good shape where the bearing goes on. It just you pull it past to here and then it pops off really easy. Otherwise you'd have to press it off the whole length of the shaft and that would suck back in there. Because this big pulley here is in the way. So I'll we'll pop in over and look at the other side. So there is a great big sprocket weighs uh, about a hundred pounds was on here and I had to pull it off of the shaft Fortunately, it came easy. I've had it off not that long ago. This bearing, I replaced it a few years back. It's got a, a greaser 
connector here that goes down to the main. Uh, you can see down here there's a couple of grease cirques that you can that connect to these hard to reach bearings. And one of them goes to this one and one goes to the other one where the seal was gone. And I'll see if I can, that's it there. So I think our shaft is still in pretty good shape. There is a groove in it, but I think it's a grease groove. I don't think it's wear. And this is what's left of the uh, seal. And I'll show you what the bearings look like. So the one that we just looked at, all you would see is this plate. And in behind the plate, there is a uh, great. So the grease circ here would go in and grease from the back side of this bearing. And this bearing is still in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of play in it, but I can read the number on it. I'm going to try and get a new one when I'm going for parts. It's hard enough to get at that I might as well put it in now while I'm working on it rather than wait and see. And this needs, this is where the seal is gone on the inside. So we'll have to get a new seal. Looks like there's enough of a ring in here to, for everything to seat properly. So that'll be all right. And the one that was gone, this is the casting on the other side. This is the inside part of the combine. There's still a bit of a seat left here from where it went, but it's kind of divoted down in here. So we might have to do something to fix that up. And this is the seal that's on the outside. This would be on the outside that we pulled off. And this is the outside seal on the bearing, which is loose. And you can see the there's a considerable amount of play. That's what was rattling in the shaft. And these bearings go in a neat way. They go into the here like this, and then they kind of butterfly in to lock into place. That's just a little bit loose, but not bad. We'll probably put a little bit of Loctite or something in there just to tighten things up when we put the new one in. And this is a greasable bearing. So this is the one that was bad for sure. And I can't read the part number on it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the very same as the one on the other side. But I don't see the bearing number on it. Anyways, I got some more parts to pick up here. So we'll get things ready to go and go to the parts store and see if we can get some parts lined up. So this is number 60 uh, double roller. Uh, this is the main drive chain, so I decided to replace it this year. So I got uh, just 10 feet and uh, looks like I needed to cut about a link off of it to make it the same length as the old one. So I got a chain breaker here and taking the links out so it'll be the same as the old one. So I got the new bearing and seal on that side. And uh, I got the bearing ready to go on the other side, but my blue silicon was all dried out. So Annette's going to pick me some up in town. I'll show you what the other side looks like on the bench. I cut a gasket out of some gasket material we had here. Uh, when I pulled it off, somebody had had this apart and just used a rubber gasket in there. Uh, so it doesn't have to do much except keep the dust out or if somebody's pressure washing it to keep the water from getting in there. Um, my silicone is dried up. I was hoping I could get one more out of it. So I'm gonna put this together and just bolt it down and clamp everything because I got everything has to line up at the same time. So if I can clamp this till the silicone's dry and then install it, that'll make my life easier. Figured I might as well put a couple of belts on it since it needs it and I've got it tore down as far as I do. I'm halfway to putting on a new uh, drive belt and another one. This is a this brand new, this is the main drive belt. And this is a pretty big sucker. It goes up in here, wraps around. You can see that there's a few things that have to come off and get moved for it to work. But 
the existing one, the uh, you can see it started to wear all the way through the grooves here. So that's time to replace when they're like that, for sure. Don't want these guys slipping. The other belt I got is to replace. Uh, this is the clutch down here. And you can see some of the cracks in this belt on the uh, variable speed. The top one is not in that bad of shape, I don't think. So I'll leave it and I'll replace this one this year while I'm there. I'm almost there. So I got to pull a bunch of parts off to do both those belts that are about the same parts. So I will do that. And I'm putting that bearing in there. I'm just waiting for Annette to come back with some silicone. And I got the new chain in place, ready to go. It's got to be hooked up after I get that bearing in. So I'll we'll see what else is going on here. I pulled the air cleaner, a radiator air cleaner spinner out of the way. So you can see where we're at, top here. This is one of the belts we're going to replace and have to kind of take things, this belt off here so I can get that bottom belt on. There's the new chain. Yeah, I'm glad that shaft doesn't go all the way through there. I can just come up in there. Oh yeah, that'll be easy. Piece of cake. Better to do it now than after we've been combining barley for a couple days. Well, I got the rotten thing out of there. It was worse than pulling a backwards calf. So here's my new belt. Here's my old one. Looks like it's the right one. So there's a new main drive belt and here's the old one you can see that the individual belts had separated when the V groove starts to wear like that the pulley starts to cut in between them and it's time for a new one I got the new belt on kind of an arm wrestle so I like to put things back together pretty quick before I forget where everything goes. There's a lot to remember here. Uh, this is way overkill for this application. I just needed to hold everything together. So I'll screw this down and uh, clamp it till the silicone sets before I put this thing back together. Things are starting to come back together here. It's back together now. I still have to do the service job on this thing. So there'll be another day of servicing, oil changes and greasing and all that stuff. I need to, uh, I didn't have a half length the right size. So I'm gonna shorten that chain up on the other side. So I'll have to get one of those. I don't know if you can remember the days when you used to go to the mechanic and he worked on your car and then he'd give you the bill and give you the box with uh, all the parts he replaced in it. So you knew that he'd done the work. It's not like today where you can spend over a thousand dollars for a software upgrade. <laughs> Anyways, these are the new parts that went in there, the old parts. These are the parts that came off the combine that are wore out. We're going to keep this traction belt just because uh, it's a big enough job that I don't think you'd ever want to put an old one on there just for fun. But be here just in case we need to, I don't know, got an empty hook on the shelf and we need to fill it up. This other drive belt, I've got a spare that's in better shape than, than this by a long way. So we just throw it out and uh, yeah, pretty small pile of parts, but big job changing them all. This old girl, for every hour you spend combining, you spend at least an hour working on it. But, uh, that's what you get when you don't have a 
really expensive combine, I guess. You get to do all the fun maintenance, the worky things, figure out how to keep it going. At least you can still, for the most part, get parts. They're not obsolete yet. So when you need a bearing or something, you can order it and it'll come within a couple of days. And uh, yeah. So the next job is we got a straight header for this. We're not gonna swath this year unless we absolutely have to. The straight header hasn't ran in well, 10, 15 years. So we're gonna go dig it out of the grass and and uh, got some parts to stick on it to get it going. And hopefully that'll do the trick. <laughs> 